15 verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. The Bible says that after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am the shield and I am the exceeding great reward. This reward, it means sakar. The word sakar, in English, it means compensation or benefit. When we talk about compensation or benefit, as far as God is concerned, a man is not rewarded in God because he has done anything. Because a man can never do anything out of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, God comes to Abraham. He tells him, check out, that uh, I am the Lord. I am your shield. And I am your exceeding great reward to you. In other words, he's saying that I am your benefit. I am, I'm, I'm your what? I am your compensation. I am your compensation. And when you look at the entirety of this conversation, God is placing a man in a position where he's introducing what a man becomes when a man accepts to agree with him. Praise the Lord. We have always said, you are not righteous because of what you've done. You are righteous because of what God has done. And therefore, because you have accepted to agree with God to that which he has already done, so righteousness has been accredited upon you. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are righteous because God has done. And because your mind rationalizes or harmonizes or agrees with what God has done, so are you righteous. So is, the, so is everything that comes from God. Because there's a way God has given us things. And there's a way God wants things to be done. And the only way a man can access them is that a man must accept to think as God thinks. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have always said that the way of God, it is how God does what? How he thinks or the consciousness of God. But the ways of God, it is how things manifest of the things he has done. Praise the Lord. And therefore, for us to show forth the ways of God, we must be established in the way of God. In other words, for us to be able to show forth the excellencies of God, we must be established in the what? In the way of God, in the thinking of God, and in the consciousness of God. So, when God calls a man and he tells him that I am thy shield and thy exceeding great, uh, great reward, what he's telling this man is saying, because you have agreed to think with me, therefore, to you, I am a great reward. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not because this man had done everything, anything. No, 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 no. Because this man, he agrees with the plan of God. What was the plan of God? The main plan of God was that Christ to be born through this generation. This man, he agrees with the plan of God. Therefore, for that reason, God agrees with him. And he tells him, because of this, because of this, so, to you I shall be a shield, and to you I shall be an exceeding reward. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. And therefore, when you talk about the reward that comes from God, this reward, it is only in God. Praise the Lord. Amen. This reward is only in God. Psalms chapter 110 verse 3. Listen to what the psalmist says. Psalms chapter 110 verse 3. The Bible says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of the youth. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is uh, uh, the psalmist prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. And now he says, after he has said that uh, he is seated on the throne, he says that his people, they will be willing in the day of his power. That after God has established his power, the people will be, healed, will, be, will be willing. And in the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning, they have to do of the youth. In other words, what this verse means, when you, when you look even in other versions, it means that the time when God shall establish his rule through Christ Jesus, that them that will have acknowledged what Christ had done, they will be willing in that time, in that time of power. In other words, it means these are people who are ready to give themselves forth so that they can receive what God has already given them. Praise the Lord. Yeah, In other words, what a man needs only to be or what a man needs only to do 
for a man to ever to be rewarded in God, it is only a man to agree and to think as God does so that he receives what God has already released in him. One thing I will always warn us and I will always remind you that God is not transactional. God is not transactional. God does not give you because you have given. God does not do something because you have done something. Praise the Lord. That is the teaching of Balaam. It is the doctrine of Balaam. That for God to do something, you have to do something. No, 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 no. no. God does not function that way. You don't give for you to receive. No, no. You give because he has given you. The Bible says that the earth and its fullness, and even them that dwell in it, they belong to who? They belong to God. So, in other words, there is nothing you have. And that's why I told you, it is, it is erroneous for a man ever to feel like he can surrender himself to God. No, you cannot surrender yourself to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you are not of yourself, you are of God. And therefore, for that reason, God is not transactional. And that's what I'm saying, that when God rewards a man, it doesn't mean that he's rewarding a man because a man has done anything. No, he's rewarding a man because a man has accepted to agree with him of what he has spoken. And that is why God shall reward you. Why will he reward you? Because you have accepted to agree and to harmonize or to rationalize with the thoughts which he has towards a man. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. David says in Psalms 19 verse 9 to 11. Psalms 19, 9 to 11. Psalms 19, 9 to 11. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous to get all together. 20. Oh. Oh, 10, 10, I'm sorry. 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold sweeter, also than honey in the honeycomb. 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant worn, and in keeping of them is a great reward. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that in the fear of the Lord, in the, in, in the accepting of the ways of the Lord, in the accepting to be positioned in the stature of the dictates of God. So in it, the servant is warned. And when the servant has been warned, they keep him. And when they keep him, this servant is, he is stored in the place of the what? Of the great reward of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And therefore a man who is in God is rewarded in God. Why is this man rewarded in God? Because this man, he has accepted to be in God. Why? What has he accepted to do? He has agreed with what God has said. Praise the Lord. For example, you are the righteous of God. Why are you the righteous of God? The Bible says that all have sinned and they have fallen short of what? Of glory. But, you understand? So you have agreed with God that, yeah, 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 I agree by the virtue that all have sinned. So what is the solution? This is the solution. That whoever shall believe shall receive eternal life. So because I believe, so have I done what? I have received eternal life. Did I do anything? No, 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 no. I just received the same righteousness. Colossians 2 from 6, 7. The Bible says, the same way you receive by faith, so shall you continue to be founded in the same. It is in the same foundation. The very way you receive to become who you are now. It is the very way you shall continue in the same path forever until, until you are out of the mortal flesh. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, no man should ever sit down and think in any case that God has done anything in them because they have done anything. No, 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 no. Even when you look at men in the old times, when they come to God and say, because of this, then do this. It doesn't mean literally, okay, it, it is God under the Old Testament and it is the place of works. Praise the Lord. And these are men who you are yet to understand who God is. But God comes and says that now you have the mind of Christ. Now you understand what I am and what you have been made. So you understand that you have become from me and therefore you are of me. You are because I am. And therefore anything you ever have it is not because you have done anything. It is because I have given you and because I am good God, every good and perfect gift, it comes from who? 
from God. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that moreover by them, I am warned. Why? Because your instructions, because you are, because your dictations, they are sweeter than honey. And because of that, I am kept in them. And great is the reward that comes because I have accepted to be that. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is who God is. And that's why he's called a father. And that's why the Bible says that he works in you to will and to do. It means this is a God who calls you from whatever place on you are. He brings you where he is and he continues to sustain you there and he continues to make you to be what he wants you to be. And the only thing he's asking from you is say, just look or just listen and do it and you shall receive this. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when God talks about, when you talk about reward, it is not like a reward. It is just God saying that these are the things that I gave you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And because you have accepted to receive them, then you take them. It's not like a reward, reward because you've done. No, no, no. He's saying, these things have given unto you. These things, they are yours. But because you have accepted to be done what? You've accepted to follow and to keep them. So take them. The things I already gave you. The things I already released to you. And therefore, to a man, you might define it as a what? As a reward. But to God, these are the providence and the provisions he has given for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us look at Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. I'm still emphasizing on the virtue that it comes from him. The Bible says that as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. How did you receive Christ? Ephesians 2, 8, right? For by grace you did what? You were saved through faith. Praise the Lord. So he's saying, just as you received, just as you received Christ, you walk ye in him. How are you walking in him? Just as you received in faith, you walk ye in him. Why? Because that faith, it made you to access grace. And therefore in the same way, the grace that works by a man believing, therefore it is the same way a man is established in receiving things God has already done what he has given to them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as he have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Because you have already understood that in the first place for you to be where you are, it was grace and it was faith that made you to access. He's saying, being rooted in the same place, just there where you received. Don't move away from there. Continue in the same stature. With the heart of thanksgiving, knowing that the same way you became a believer, it is the same way the Lord shall also do what he shall reward you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Therefore, this means it calls a man to the place of agreeing with God, rationalizing with God. The things I'm saying, they are only for men who have agreed with God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm still establishing. Isaiah 40, 9 to 10. Isaiah 49 to 10. Isaiah 49 to 10. The Bible says, O Zion that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Verse 10. The Bible says, Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work is before him. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that the reward of God is in him. Like it is in him. So it is a man who is in him. Who is a man who is in God? Is a man who has accepted to think as God does. So the reward of God is with him and his work is before him. That is the what? The works of God. They are before him. Brethren, what I'm trying to say is that when you talk about the things God rewards us with, these are the things that are with God. Praise the Lord. These are all the things that we achieve. These are the things that are with 
that are in the Lord. And that these things, they are given to us when we agree with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You truly, me, Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. The Bible says that for the Lord's portion is his inheritance. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. This is a man who is in God. This is a generation which is in God. So this is a generation that is established in the reward of God. In the things of God. Pray the Lord Jesus. When we read Revelation 22 to 12, it talks about, I'm coming so quickly, right? And I'm coming to give each and every man a word. Each and every man a word. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, what I'm trying to say, what I'm saying is, that the reward of God, or the reward that God gives men who have believed in him, is only in him. So, he that believes and agrees in him, so do they do what? They receive that which the Lord has given them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. There is a reward in the reward of God. Praise the Lord. God rewards men in the reward. When God blesses a man, it is it will be of the lowest thing if the blessings of God can never be defined in the possessions of a man. Praise the Lord. Amen. If God can define a man blessed because of how much money they have, because of how many vehicles they have, because of how land, how much land they have, then the blessings of God, they, should, they would have done what? They would have lost their place of value. Praise the Lord. Yes. What I'm trying to say. It will be so unfair for God to reward an eternal man with a what? With a temporal reward. We say that this life, it is not even a drop in the ocean of the life which we are or of what we have received. What we have received is immortality. Immortality means we have no trace of beginning. We have no trace of end. Praise the Lord. Praise so, if God can only, or if the blessings of God, or if the word of God can only be defined in the things men can see, then that is, that is, that is injustice to what we have received and what we are. If our success and our reward and our blessings can only be defined in the things that we can touch and walk with, and within time they shall disappear. Then of all the people we shall be all the miserable people. Praise the Lord. Amen. But glory be to God. The reward of God is beyond material. Praise the Lord. Yes. Do I mean that God cannot reward you materially? No, you can't. Why? He rewards you spiritually for you to be rewarded where? Material. But is it the main center of God to reward you material? No. That is not God's business. God's business is for you to ensure you are established first in the what? In the places where you are. If that is the immortality place. So that in the physical or in the material world, then shall you also prosper. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Asaf, when you read Asaf 73, uh, Psalm 73, verse 3. I want you to look at a man. This is a man of God. This man of God, he, he, he sits down and he looks at things. Then this man is depressed. Why is this man depressed? This man is depressed because this man serves God. But this is another man who never serves God. But this man is flourishing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. And he's asking God. This is a man who is serving God. But the time comes where the way the world defines things, defines his world also. And that's why this man is distressed. 73. Three. This man is distressed. See what he says. This man says, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. We have always said about wickedness. A wicked person is not a person who sins. No. A wicked person is a person who is indifferent with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you will ever think contrary to what God thinks, then you are a wicked man. 
You can be a wicked, righteous man. Praise the Lord. You have been born of righteousness, but you are, your mind is contra to what God has already done, what he has spoken. This is Asaf. Asaf is a man of God. Asaf is also overtaken by the way the world defines what reward and what blessings and what success is. The world tells him that for you to show us that you are rich, show us how many camels you have, show us how many lands you have, show us how many wives you have. So this man sits down and he looks at himself, yet he has nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then he looks at another wicked man who is not in the plan and the agenda of God. But this man, what is he doing? This man is prospering. Then he fills his areas. Praise the Lord. Amen. Until a man enters the sanctuary of God. Is it verse 15? Hmm. When Asaph enters the sanctuary of God, no, 16 to 17. Give me 16 of the same chapter. Verse 16. I want you to see when this man, when this man's eyes are open, this man says. When I thought I know this, it was too painful for me. It was too painful. Why? I was so carried with what the world defines. But not as verse 18 says. The Bible says that until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their yeah. end. Praise the Lord. Amen. What does it say, in other words? It say that I understood that this man, as much as he's wicked, and he can be able to understand how to go around and have all these things, I know their end. This is a way that looks right for man, but its end is what? It is destruction. I already know their end. Why? Because what they have, it is temporal. And the temporality of these things shall end with what? With their life. Praise the Lord. For so Asaph, what is Asaph saying? He's saying that there is much more beyond what a man has received apart from material things. Praise the Lord. Am I saying it is hard to, it, is, it, is it wrong to drive? No, 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 no. Of course, everybody wants to drive. Praise the Lord. God wants us to live a good life. God wants us to have money. Praise the Lord. God wants us to have good clothes. God wants us to live a good life. But is it all? No. There is much more beyond to that. Why? This is only for this mortal body. And remember, we are not this mortal body. This mortal body is only a temple. There is much more God has given to us. Praise the Lord. And that's what Paul will say, that if it is only in this life that you have hope, then of all the people, you are the most miserable person. You are the most miserable. You are most miserable than that person who is not born again. You are most miserable than anybody else. If it is in this life where you never know, define what life is, then you are of all people the most miserable. Praise the Lord. Because there is much, much more which God has called you into. And the only thing he's saying, he's saying that now that you've become my son, just look and see the things which I've given you. This is the reward for them that have done what? That have decided to keep. Because it shall warn them and it shall bring them the great reward. So he's saying, these are the things I've given you. But we as men, we have been defined in the things the world can define what it is. A man will only feel blessed because they did what? Because they managed to do what? To buy a land. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And it is the worst and the worst of all. Praise the Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. These are heavy stuff and overwhelming at a time. But these are the realities. Until we, as the new creation, will realize that we are not what we seem. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We are not we are not physical first. No, we are spirit first. Then we are. Physical. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And Jesus will say, store up your heart. So the Lord, your treasures in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Where there is no moth and there is no vermin. Because here on earth it shall be done what? It shall be destroyed. What Jesus is saying, he's saying that guys, because I have come, I have made you a citizenship to change. The things of value are no longer the things which you used to value. But the value which I am bringing to you, it is much far beyond what you can see. And what you can possess as a man here on earth. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Therefore, God can make or God can be able to open a, mind, a man's 
mind to a place where a man will have a lot for his family. Praise the Lord. Amen. And for his life and for his. But is that the main role of God? No. But God can open your mind to so. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter chapter 10 verse 22. The Bible speaks about a man who God blesses. There's a man God blesses. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a man. The Bible says that, um, that God is able to open a man up to a way that a man can be able to have so enough for himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when he has enough for himself, this shall not come with what? Shall not come with sorrow. Examples of sorrow. Psalms 127 verse 2. Look at the sorrowful man. Who is very rich? He's very rich, but very sorrowful. Why is this man very sorrowful? This man, he rises up early in the morning and he sits up late to eat bread of sorrow. So, but God gives what? He gives sleep to those who he loves. There's a man who will have to sleep at two and wake up at four, praise the Lord, to sustain that which he has. The reason why uh, this is when I understood what this verse actually means. You know, some people normally just say, oh, for the Lord, he given sleep to those he loves. For he has given his beloved sleep. The reason why God will give you sleep, it's because you will not be thinking when sleeping how to make riches. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Roman says the rich never sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you turn this way, you'll be like, ah, I remember I, uh, this, this guy who owes me this money. But there's a man who has been blessed in God. Because this man has been blessed in God. This man, he has peace when, this man, when he sleeps. So, this man no longer worries about what shall come tomorrow. Why? Because this man walks in the blessedness of who? In the blessedness of God. When I say, when I come and right? Yes. Be yes. Because you have an assurance. So, there is a way God brings a blessing. But he doesn't do what? It doesn't come with sorrow. You can pray to God to give you a job. Then that job separates you from God. You can give you can pray to God to give you a job. And that job is what makes your life to be even more miserable. No, like that is not the pattern of God. When God opens you up to a thing, it comes up with a satisfaction of the realities of Zion. Praise the Lord. And therefore. The things we call blessings, they are not like blessings, but they are just the outflow of the blessing which you have received in God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the blessing which you have received is as the reward which is in him. So what we shall call the reward. In the reward, this is the reward because we have agreed with him of the things eternal, so we can also converse in the things what? Terrestrial for that reason. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hmm. Take me back to Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. The Bible says that after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, first God assures him that he is his shield. Then secondly, he says that he is his great one. Give me 14, <coughs> chapter 14. Is it from verse 13? <coughs> yeah, maybe 13. Uh, this instance happens after Abraham sends his nephew from the war. So, yeah, okay, you can just move in it. He says, and when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan, and divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hoba, which is on the left hand of Damascus, and brought uh, back all, all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people, 17, and the king of Sodom went out to him. I want you to look at a man who understands who God is. The Bible says that, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return. 
from the slaughter of Shedaleman and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheba, which is the king's death. 18. Then the king said, Oh no. Have we missed something? No. Oh, it's okay. From 17 to 18. Oh, yeah. 18. The Bible says, And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and was the priest and the most high. I hope by now you understand Melchizedek, right? Mm. Yes. We understand Melchizedek, king of Salem. Salem means peace. Christ is considered to be the king, to be who? King of peace. Yeah. To be the prince of peace. So he's considered to be who? This is God himself, right? Yes. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most God, possessor of heaven and earth. Uh -huh. Verse and blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So he gave him part of the plunder he had received. Verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. 22. But Abraham said to king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Elder. And I will not take from a thread even to a shoe lashes, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abraham rich. Praise the Lord. Amen. What I'm trying to say here is that when a man comes to God, or when a man starts to deal with God, or when a man comes in God, a man must be able to understand that God is the one who rewards. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the king of Sodom after Abraham had a victory, Abraham understood who gave him the victory. Praise the Lord. So when he has received the victory, when this guy comes and says, you know what, just give us the people and take the entire thing. He says, no. I can never take anything from you. The reason why this man refuses to take anything from him is because he says, I know who rewards me. Praise the Lord. I understand where I receive my reward. And if said I'll ever confuse where the reward of a man comes from, then I will miss it. But he tells him, no, 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 no. I won't take anything from you. But I will receive that which God has done what? Which God has given. Because I've understood that even in this victory, it is God who has done what? Who has given me. So this is a man who understands that it is not man who rewards you. It is God who rewards who? Who rewards man. And now, in the clear picture in the New Testament, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, now when Paul is writing, in Hebrews 11, verse 6, Paul comes because he understands. He sees, and he understands, and he says that now, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God, he must believe that he is. One, you believe that he is God. Number two, you believe that he is a rewarder of them that do what? That diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And a man can only be rewarded in God if a man knows that God rewards. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In other words, a man can never receive apart from expectations. You can never receive to be what you have not expected to become. You must expect first in the Lord. So when a man comes to God, you come understanding that God is a who? Is a reward. Why? Because you have already understood who he is. He says that I am the same yesterday, today, and every day, right? And forevermore. So I have understood who God really is. So when I come, I already have the mentality and the consciousness that he rewards men. Praise the Lord. Amen. And because I know he rewards men, therefore I will walk in the reward of God. Look at Abraham. Abraham says to, to this king, he says, no, 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 no. You, I won't receive anything from you. Lest you ever reach a point and say that the riches I have, you are the one who has, who has done what? Who has made me rich. No, I know, the, I know who makes me rich. I know where my riches come from. I know who enables me and who shows me where to go to become what? To become rich. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because this is a man who understands where the reward comes from. And therefore, for you to ever receive reward from God, so what do you do? You must know that it is him that you want. And you must carry the expectation that God is a rewarder to humanity. Yes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is a consciousness a man must have that God rewards. Higher. Do you go and tell God, God, you know what? Because I did this, 
I want you to do this. No, that becomes transactional. God rewards us differently. Praise the Lord. God rewards us differently. You do something different, he, 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 he works something different in your heart. He works something different in your life. He opens a different thing. You do this, you pray for a job, God does what? He gives you divine health. Praise the Lord. Is he a rewarder? Yes. Did he give you what you wanted in your in your essential man? No. But is he a rewarder? Yes. Why? He rewards. But is it that do you work to be rewarded? No, no, no. You work because you've done what? Because you've been rewarded. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, it is the responsibility of a man to do what? To know that God rewards men. And therefore, for a man when they serve God, to have the consciousness that God does what? He rewards. Paul knew God rewards, right? Paul knew that God rewards. That's why he could say that I do what? I keep on beating myself. Because I know there is a reward for all this. This is not for what? This is not just for show. No, there is a reward for all these things. Because he knew, he carried that consciousness. And even tell you, no, 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 there's a crown of righteousness which shall be done what? Which shall be put on you. There is a crown. There is something a man receives after he has finished. Why? He understands that the God whom he has come to serve is a God who rewards men. And is a God the rewarder. And this reward, it is so great a reward that can never be compared to anything temporal. It is far much beyond what we can see and what physically you can feel as a man and count it as a what? As a reward in your own stature. And that's why when you read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34 to 35 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34 to 35 the Bible says Hebrews 10 34 to 35 the Bible says that for ye had compassion for me in my bonds and took joy through the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Praise the Lord. He's a consciousness. Somebody help. That these people, before they did what they did, they know that in a heavenly place, they have a what? A better and enduring substance. Verse 35. The Bible says that cast not away there for your confidence. There's a confidence a man carries of the things that await him. Which has great recompense of what? Of reward. Like it has a great one. Why? This is a man who understands that what I'm doing, it is not just for the sake of. There is something that awaits me. Praise the Lord. Mm. But we shall look at now ask. What is a man supposed to do for this recompense of reward? Praise the Lord Jesus. Mm. What is that thing? Because it is not eternal life. A man has already been given eternal life. What is a man being rewarded here? In the recompense of reward. Of them that have carried the consciousness that they are rewarded. Praise the Lord. So as a church and as a believer, number one, you must know that God rewards. So you must carry the consciousness that God rewards. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Then the reward shall be actualized in your life. Despite though, despite though, as much as we are so much inclined to understanding that God rewards men, we must also understand that God is God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And there's a way God wants things to be done in Him. There is the counsel of God that guides men to do things as He wants them to be. In other words, the reason why God will ever do anything here on earth, it is because he wants to do what? To let his purpose be fulfilled. The reason why God called you for salvation is because there's something he wanted to do in you, which he said that before the foundation of the earth. Praise the Lord. You did not get born again to feel good. You did not get a born so that you can be walking around with you knowing that everything is okay. You are born again for a given purpose. Praise the Lord. Yes. You are not born again so that when people look at you and laugh at you, you tell them, you know what? I've already gone to heaven. 
Na nini bado mko wapi? Nini bado mko hapa? You you understand what I'm saying? Like a man is born again for a given purpose. And that's what now calls for the very counsel of God. For a man to be able to do what God has called him to do, a man must do that which God has called him as God wants him to do it. Praise the Lord. A man has called a man to preach, but not just to preach in a particular place, to preach in a specific where? Specific place. Praise the Lord. God has called a man to preach in a crusade. God has called a man to be preaching where? At the road cross. If this man does not preach at the road cross, and this man does what? He preaches in the church, or in a very big church, then this man has missed the cause of God. He has missed the purpose of God. So, when Paul talks about that all these works shall be passed through fire, when they are passed through fires, they will be weighed. When they are weighed, they are founded that they are not based on the counsel of God. So, these words cannot stand to do what? To be accredited to a reward. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Did man preach? Yes. Did God want this man to preach? Yes. But where did, this, where, where did God want this man to preach? Not just anywhere. In a specific place. And that now carries what you call the counsel of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. We had a very lengthy conversation about the counsel of God that instructs men in the purpose he wants to fulfill through them. Proverbs chapter 20. Chapter 20, verse 18. The Bible says, Proverbs 20, 18. The Bible says that every purpose is established by counsel and with the good advice you make war. Praise the Lord. That every purpose, that everything God has ever wanted a man to do, it is found where? In his counsel. So it is only in that instruction that you can ever go and do it in the right way. Because when they say you make war, you must win. Praise the Lord. You must come out as a victor. So it is only when you've been established in the completeness of the council that you can be able to fulfill the purpose of God. But look at what the Bible says in 1522. The same book, Proverbs 15.22. Proverbs 15.22. Proverbs 15.22. Proverbs 15.22. The Bible says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Praise the Lord. It means that for a purpose to be established, right? Counsel must be the first thing to be established. But when the counsel misses, or when a man misses on the instruction of God, what happens? The purposes of God are disappointed or they are frustrated. Have you heard of people frustrate the grace of God? The Bible has talked about people frustrate the grace of God, right? Yes. Because these people, they have missed out something about the counsel of God but telling what God has called them to be. And therefore, counsel is what establishes a man in the rightness of what God wants him to be. Where he wants them to be and when he wants them to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it is only unto men that have agreed with God, that are to be co-workers and to collaborate with him, that are founded in the places where God wants them to be. Praise the Lord Jesus. Our God is good. Our God is our Father. Our God is righteous. And our God is a righteous judge. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is a righteous judge. God judges us in righteousness. And the righteousness which you talk about now here, or the judgment which you talk about here now, there's something uh, David says in Psalms 1.5. David says, or he clearly dictates, that there are two people. There's one who has agreed with God, and there's another one who has not agreed with God. Therefore he says, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of who? Of the righteous. What David is saying, he says, that there will be no day where a man who has not agreed with God and a man who has agreed with God will ever be judged the same way. In other words, it means in the judgment of God as a righteous man, you can never be judged as a man who is not believing as you have. Praise the Lord. Amen. And therefore, it means that a man will be judged. That's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.10, right? That's what he says. He says that the righteous man 
There's a time which will come. Second Corinthians 5.10. There's a time which will come. The righteous man will have to stand before. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of God, of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is called Bima. Bima is called the bench of decision. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he had done, whether it be good or it be bad. In other words, I'll, I'll explain to you what it means to be good or to be bad. Because whoever is being here or whoever is coming to the Bima seat or whoever is coming to the judgment of God, this is not a wicked man or this is not a this is not a man who is not born again. This is for a believer. He's a believer who is coming before the beam. Praise the Lord. He's coming before the righteous seat of God. But he's saying that this man shall receive according to what he has done in the flesh. Why? Right? This man, he has already received one thing. This man has already received what? Eternal life because he has believed. But this man shall also receive what he has done where? In the flesh. Praise the Lord. But now, what? What exactly done in the flesh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Whether it be good or it be, it, it be bad. I've always told you, it is only good if it is God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nothing can ever be defined good unless it is defined in God. It doesn't matter if it is working. No. If it is not God, then it is not good. Praise the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter if it looks so nice. No, 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 no. It is not God. Then it is not good. So if a man ever did anything out of God's counsel, then it is not good. It is bad. Praise the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter you did it. No. Did you do it in the instruction of God? No, no, no. It is not good. It is bad. It is only good if it is God. And God does not have two ways. God has one way. And therefore, it is the responsibility of a man to know the one way to be established in the good stature of the decree of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is not multi, uh, uh, multi-dimensional in the dispatch of his cancer. No, no, no. God. is not relative. Relative means you can either do it to this extent, do it. No, no, no. It is one. And now, when you do it to that, then it does what? It becomes good. The other day we talked about Paul. Paul says, having received the full counsel, praise the Lord, yeah. therefore I withheld nothing. Then, after this man, after he has given everything, after receiving the counsel, he says, I have now fought a what? A good fight of faith. You get it? And now this guy says, he's now ready to do what? To rest. Because this guy knows that whatever he has done, it is good because it is in the veriness of the counsel of God. So when this man dies, he doesn't worry about it. And this man, he reaches a point and he says, no, I think my time to die has come. Why? I've already done the good things in my flesh so that I can now do what? I can now rest. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I told you, Bima, I told you Bima means the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ is called Bima in Greek, which it means to approach to do what? You approach to receive. It is it is approaching to receive. When you talk about that there's a judgment seat, it doesn't mean that there is a place God will be seated and will be coming and asking you, what did you do? What no. It doesn't work, work that way. As we were told stories when we were young. Yes. And the way the movies show us, right? Second Timothy 4 8. I want you to look at uh, how Paul 4 7. Can you give me 4 7 first? I want you to see what Paul is saying. <coughs> Paul is saying, I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm close to finishing. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, That uh, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of what? Of righteousness. Which, is, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his what? His appearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. The appearing of God. The appearing of, 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 of our Lord Jesus and all that. We shall talk about that as we continue. So, the work of a man is imposed to a given what? To a given stature. First Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 9. What I'm trying to say, brethren, when God is talking about the work of a man, God is not talking about anything else. God is talking about the work of service. 
a man can ever have in him. Praise the Lord. When you talk about, when you talk about God judging your work as a man, he said that God is judging you are, you is judging what you gave yourself to as a result of agreeing with that which he had already dictated you to become. God has made you righteous. God has given you a given task. So, God has called you to be. So, how much or to what extent you accept to take what he has given you, it is what we call, or what we bring now to what? To the place of judgment. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen to what Paul says. For we are laborers together with God. Yes, ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ten. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And no other buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth. How is this man building? Paul has said, upon you, man, you are a building. Praise the Lord. Then he says, that whenever you are building also, because I've given you a foundation, and you will tell us what the foundation is. He, say, he says, I have already laid a foundation for you. But whenever you are building on this foundation, whenever you are building on this foundation, you should be careful how you are building your foundation on it or how you are building on this foundation which has done what? Which has already been given to you. Higher, verse 11. Verse 11, the Bible says, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid. So who, built, who, who brought the foundation? Paul gave us the idea of the foundation. So he says, which is Jesus Christ? When I came to you, I gave you Christ. Right? That's what he says. That when I came to you, I gave you Christ. So this is the foundation I gave you. But when you are building on this foundation, you should be very careful. You should take heed whenever you are doing what? Whenever you are building on that foundation. Because there is no other foundation apart from this foundation. What Paul is talking about is talking about the ministry of a man. He's talking about the service a man gives, having received the things God has given him. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, we, we, we read in Romans 12:11 that doing what? Not slothful in business. Is that okay? Fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. In other words, the place where God has brought man to, it is to do what? To serve him. Where are you serving the Lord? You are serving him from a given understanding of a foundation which you have received. Which is who? Which is Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, let us look at the next verse, what it says. <laughs> says, Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, supple, it depends on what you build. And I'll tell you what it means when you differentiate this. There's another man who builds the gold, another man who builds in silver, another with precious stones, another one with the wood, with the hay and stubble. This is figurative language. The next verse, verse 13. The Bible says that every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The Bible says that what are the works of a man, as far as ministry is concerned? It shall be passed through what? Through fire. And Apple John Tramia, like these things, they are made of different material. Another one gold, another one silver, another one what? Hay, another one wood, and it is being passed through what? It is being passed through fire. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereup, thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If you are work. Zita will withstand motor about a petitioner. Basi, that means what? That reward. You will receive a reward. Why? Yeah. It is in the very counsel of God. Verse 15. But if any, man's, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so, as by fire. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yeah. The Bible is saying, that this month's work, it shall be weighed, right? This month's work shall be passed through a given scale. It shall be passed through fire. So this month's work, it is tested of which material is it made. First, we've been told that this month's foundation is Christ and no other thing. But the problem is, to which material did a man build on that foundation? 
praise the Lord. The question is, God called you as a pastor. God called you as an evangelist, right? It is true. God called you. And it was founded on the foundation of who? Of Christ Jesus. But the question is, what was the reason why you chose to do so? Praise the Lord. There's a man who preaches, or there's a man who has a ministry, and the reason why this man chose to have that ministry is to do what? Is for him to get something. You get it? It's for him to be sustained with something. So this man, he's doing the right thing. This man is preaching the gospel. It is true. But this man's intention, there are no proceeding from what Christ preaches. What is the preaching of God? What is, what is the proceeding of a man built in Christ? The proceeding of a man built in Christ is that everything this man does comes from what? From love. Praise the Lord. Amen. For he has first loved us. So, do we love, right? For this is, the sh this is the sign of love, that he laid his life and he picked us. So do we lay our lives for others. So all this, it proceeds from the place of love and the place of understanding. But there is a man who is doing the same thing another man is doing. But the reason why he is doing the same thing, it is not the reason why another man is doing it. Praise the Lord. So these two men's work shall be brought through fire. And when it is tested, it is it comes out that this man, the reason why he did what he did, it was not because for God, but he did the work of God, but he did it for him himself. Then that cannot start to receive a reward. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know if I make sense. Yes. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yes. A man did what's right. It's true. It is right. And it's not good. Why? It's not good because it's not good. It's not good because it's not God. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the proceeding of the action, it is not from God. So anything a man must ever do, it must come from a place of love. It is not, if it's not from a place of love, on the foundation of Christ Jesus, then it can never be defined in the stature of what God has dictated as what? As right or as good. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. When you look at First uh, Timothy one seven, don't pull, don't don't pull it. He talks about that God has given us a spirit of what, a spirit of love, right? A spirit of power. So anything a man can never do it is for what, for love. Uh, Ephesians, I think one from fifteen, it says, therefore, after I heard of your love and your faith toward the other the other the other servants, I I stop not to pray for you. Praise the Lord. When you talk about a Philemon from verse one, or when you, from verse one to verse six, talks about after I heard of your love and your faith. It is only in the place of love and faith that Paul could start to pray for such a man to do what? To be able to access the mysteries of God. But there's a man who does something which is out of that foundation. So this man is doing the same thing you're doing. He's doing the same thing you're doing. He's doing the very thing, but from a different place of motive. Praise the Lord. Ever okay. say God says that God is not like a man. He looks at the heart. He's not concerned about what you've done. No, he's concerned why did you do it in the first place? Why did you say the word you said? Why did you choose to go and preach to that person? Why did you choose to be in that church? Why did you choose to come in the church? Or to come to church? Praise the Lord. Amen. So God is not interested in the end. He's interested even in the means that brings the end. Because men can be what? Men can be... The Bible says that the heart of a man is done what? It is desperate wicked at some point. Praise the Lord. And that's why God, uh, that's why a man can be something different and be another thing uh, or, or be another thing in the next minute. So, God is interested in you being what you want to be continuously in that which he has already wrought, in that which he has already made you. So that you shall only have one picture of you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. We have been told that if a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. So what loss does a man suffer? As a new creation. What loss do you suffer? But yet you are saved. And yet you are saved by what? By fire. For us to be able to know what a man loses when they, their works or what, when they are, they are what? what they have done is done what? It is tested. Then you must know what a man receives 
When it does what? When it withstands the fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is something I want to show you. Very fast. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. I'm finishing the next few. Second Thessalonians 2 9. The Bible says that even, even he who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and light. Is it second? This is second, right? Yeah. Chapter 1, chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 9. Sorry. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says that who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. This is Paul talking about men who refuse to receive Christ, right? So he's saying that when God shall come, he shall punish them with a what? With an everlasting destruction from the, from the, from me, apart from. In other words, it means the reason why this man shall have everlasting destruction is because he shall lack another thing. What will this man lack? He will lack the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, I don't know how to explain it very well, but what, I'm, what, what I mean is what this verse means, or we've always said, the reason why there is death is because there is a percentage of life. Praise, praise the Lord. The reason why there is life is because there is a percentage of what? Of death. The reason why a man will receive eternal life is because a man will have the presence of the Lord and he will carry the glory of the Lord. The reason why a man will be everlastingly destroyed is because a man will do what? He will lack the presence in the glory and the riches that pertain to God. So, because this man will lack the things which are in God, then this man is imposed to what? To destruction. Is it God destroying this man? No. It is not God destroying him. It is by the virtue that God is absent, then this man is destroyed. Praise the Lord. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. In other words, this a built up. When you talk about from, it doesn't mean from, it doesn't mean that God is taking himself away. No. It means there is absence of God. And because there is absence of God, then there is absence of his salvation. And therefore, this man cannot be done what? Cannot be saved. It is the same way when a man will miss, or when a man will not receive that which God has given a man, then a man will suffer loss. This man, he will suffer loss. Why? Because he will be destroyed. Why will he be destroyed? Because there is absence of the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. So this man will be destroyed. So a man who will not be able to get what God gives a man after a man has gone through fire, then this man will suffer loss of what God gives men. Praise the Lord. In other words, what another will have, will you not have? Loss doesn't mean there is something else you are giving out. No. Loss means you are losing or you have not managed to get what another man will do what? What another man will get. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. James 1 verse 12. I told you this is a heavy matter. James 1 verse 12. James 1 12. The Bible says that blessed is the man that in the temptation for which he is tried. He shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love, love him. The word crown of life. It is the same word Paul uses for crown of righteousness. In the Greek it is called Stephanos. Stephanos means a word of victory. Praise the Lord. A word of victory in the sense that a man can be able to sustain to receive. Remember, victory is only accounted victory if a man gets what he's supposed to get for that reason. So, a man is given a crown because this, a man, this man has become a what? This man has become a victor. Praise the Lord. We shall see what victory is. It's all about Second Timothy 4, 7, 8. Just give me 8. 4, 8. Second Timothy 4, 8. As we finish. The Bible says that hateful there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that there is a crown of righteousness. There is a Stephanos that shall be given unto men, because they have done what? Because they are faithful, and because 
others also love him as he does, so upon appearing, so shall they also delight in receiving what he shall give. You can also go and look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. It talks about the shepherds and the responsibility to look over, to watch over the God's flock and how God shall come and reward them. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have agreed and we have settled that it will be smaller thing for God to reward an immortal man with only mortal or temporal things. Praise the Lord. Amen. And therefore for that reason, I want us to see what are some of the things a man receives because he has remained faithful to what God has done what? What God has entrusted unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us look at God himself teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 13. No, Matthew chapter 20. Five, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 13. I want us to look at this illustration. And this illustration will give us an insight, not completely, an insight of exactly what a man receives when a man fulfills that which the Lord has entrusted to him. Look at what it says. It says, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. 14. The Bible says, for the kingdom of heaven is as man traveling into a far country. So he starts to give them. Then he says that to who, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So 15. And unto one he gave five talents, another one, two, another one, one. To every man according to his several ability and straight away took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents. Next. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gave other two. Next. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord money. 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. The Lord, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things greater. Uh, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents, and I have gained two other talents beside them. What does he say next? His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then the next one. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not sown. 25. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto thou, and unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. You know what he said? Mm -hmm. Not slothful in what? Yes. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sought not. I gather where I have not strong. 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with me. 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has the talent. Praise the Lord. Amen. When they talk about giving one five and another one two, it doesn't mean that one is given more than the other one. It means one is given to the ability he has than the other one. And it doesn't mean that this man will receive more because he has been given more because he has a, a more ability than the other one who has less abilities. It only means that he will receive to the equivalent to unto which he shall use. Praise the Lord. Amen. By the virtue that a man preaches on the pulpit, it does not make him better than a man that do that, that do what? That serves as an usher. Praise the Lord. This man, he has been given that responsibility according to the what? According to the ability. It doesn't man, it doesn't mean that that man shall receive the equivalent of being an usher. No. This man shall receive the equivalent of serving as an usher. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you, a 
as an usher, you will receive because you have served faithful as an usher to the abilities you have given. This man of God, he shall receive because he has served equivalently to that which God has entrusted to him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And therefore, when you look at the conversation, there are three people and they clearly show us what actually happened. When you look at uh, uh, when, God, uh, when, when God is talking to the people who done what? People who were faithful with what they did. Basically, we see two things. Praise the Lord. Number one, we see that God commendation of words to the servants and their faithfulness committed to their one what? To their one trust. Praise the Lord. So it means if a man receives a reward from God, what is the first reward a man receives? A man receives commendation of the word of God. Praise the Lord. A man receives commendations of the word of God because of their faithfulness to what was committed to them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So a man receives the commendation of God. How do we know that God commends people? First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Listen to what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. The Bible says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. When God commends a man, this man shall have praise of God. Praise the Lord. So God commends a man from that which a man has done. And I was just meditating and thinking, what does it entail when God commands you? Faithful servant. You get it? The faithful servant. Enter my joy. What does it entail for the author of all things to commend you as a man? Praise the Lord. Amen. The second thing we see after these people returned, they did what? Their authority was increased and their responsibility. There was increasing their responsibility and what? And their authority because they were faithful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Daniel talks about the people or the saints who shall rule with Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And therefore, there's authority a man given, a man who has been faithful in the things of God. The only reason why we are blinded of such things it's because of what the world has defined. But when you look at the deepest things of the spirit and the things beyond what we can logically settle here, there is much more a man becomes apart from this life. Praise the Lord. Amen. A man has been set for things beyond this. Well, we said the other time that when God creates man and he says have dominion, in other words, God made a man to be a prince over the earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jude says, that there are angels in heaven who left their estate, who left their place of what? Place of authority. And therefore, there is an authority a man has, and a man carries, and a man will carry as far as the new regime is concerned. Praise the Lord. Yes. But that is a story for another day and for that case. So, back to our question. What does a man lose when they miss to do what? when they miss, or when their works are banned, what a man will miss, a man will not receive commendation of the things he has done. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. This man will, will have suffered loss. Why? Because he will not have. Because he will not receive, so will he not have. Because he has not had, then he has done what? He has suffered loss. Therefore, what I'm saying is, that God has called us to the things much higher than the things we can have here. Praise the Lord. And for that reason, having established us in righteousness, God has called us to serve him in the different capacities which we don't want, which we are. The Bible says that everything you do, do it as if you are doing what? You are doing it for the Lord. So God has called us to the place of service in every, every, every place, in the church and in every ground. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God is assuring us that there is a reward to men that remain faithful to the service that he gives each and every man. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you think when this church came, God said that there will be no singers in this place? Did God say that these chairs will be empty? No. God had already assigned people to be here. But why are they not here? Praise the Lord. Amen. Because there is, not, there is something which a man has not yet realized. But God is calling us and is saying that not slothful in business. Not slothful means not lacking in, in, in zeal. Praise the Lord. Not holding back anything, but serving the Lord with all zeal as far as a man is concerned. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. And the Lord has called us to a higher calling. And he's saying, but guys, this is what I have invited you to. 1 Corinthians 9.25 1 Corinthians 9.25 1 Corinthians 9.25 Bible says that and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Praise the Lord. In other words, what Paul is saying that we, what we are striving to get, it is not the things of corruption. It is the things of incorruptibility. In other words, is it the same Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 15, it says, serving the Lord with sin, right? Because it is not in vain. In vain, vain means chaos. Chaos means things that shall do what? Things that shall disappear. In other words, the things which a man serve the Lord for, they are not the things which are material, which shall be corruptible or which shall end. But God serves man for what? For the things of incorruption. Praise the Lord. Amen. And therefore it is a call God is giving us. He's saying that serve me in diligence because that is what I have called you to be. We can do this topic for a year. It is so detailed and there's so much more and so beyond that. Praise the Lord. Let us keep standing.